And I started to think about when you are producing a cake, whatever ingredients you put in the cake is what you're going to get. So if you put rotten ingredients in it, you're going to get a rotten cake. I thought about uh, an assembly line. You know, some, I was talking to someone the other day and they were saying, um, our young people you know, are involved in so many negative things. And so I said to the, the person, I said, well, you know, whatever parts you put on the assembly line, that's the car you're gonna get. So in order for us to find success, personally and individually, we have to make sure that we think about, meditate on, and put the right thing into our system, share the right things with our children, and make sure that we try to find things that are good and good report. I, 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 we live in a world where there are all kinds of challenges, but if we can focus in, on making sure that we put the good ingredients in and we'll get a good product out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to go over the business of the country. And Father, we ask your guidance and your direction as we proceed today. And we thank you for wisdom. And thank you for discernment to know what to do and what to say. And what policies to enact. And we give you thanks for these things. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. 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 Dr. Hubert Minnis, Peter Turnquist, Brent Simonet, Desmond Bannister, Renwood Wells, Jeffrey Lloyd, Dr. Greenstein, Marvin Dane, Frankie Campbell, Nikio Diagula, Michael Fintard, Darren Henfield, Ramal Ferreira, Alicia Rowe, Renville Rook, Ellsworth Johnson, Philip Davis, Vaughn Miller, Leticia Parker Edstrom, Aaron Lewis, Carlton Boleg, James Albrey, Travis Robinson, Adrian Gibson, Donald Saunders, Frederick McElpine, Hank Johnson, Mark Hume, Michael Pope, Miriam Refnick Emanuel, Rick Shipman, Ruben Ramming, Ricky Mackey, Shannon Don Cartwright, Chanel Ferguson, Glennis Hannah Martin, Pricewell Ford, Chester Cooper. Good morning, honorable members. Hon honorable members, just by way of a reminder, uh, tomorrow morning, um, the Book of Condolences will be presented in the foyer of the House of Assembly. And uh, uh, all members, all senators, former members of parliament, and dignitaries and members of the public uh, will be invited to attend at the House of Assembly tomorrow morning, beginning at 9 a.m., to express their sympathies and condolences to the family of the late Sir William Allen. Uh, and an expression of gratitude for a full life of service to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Introduction and swearing in of new members. Laying of documents 
by ministers. Statements and communications by ministers. Communications by the clerk. Mr. Speaker. Messages from the Governor General. Messages from the Senate. Motion for leave of absence, leave to resign seat, and new writs. Presentation of petitions. Presentations of reports of committees. Adoption of reports of committees. First reading of bills. Second reading. Oh. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Freetown. Uh, first, on first reading of bills. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, House. Um, I'd just like to start off with a bit of housekeeping, Mr. Speaker. Uh, on the, uh, the notices of motions for today, Wednesday forenoon, the 27th of January, the very first item on that listing is a bill for an act to amend the Civil Aviation Act. I would beg the indulgence of the House to have that uh, removed from the list, Mr. Speaker, based on what I'm about to lay. Honorable Leader for the official opposition, the member for Freetown is seeking to have a bill to, to withdraw a, a bill from the agenda and to replace it with a bill that he's presenting. Is there any objection? Uh, the chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. Uh, obviously, Mr. Speaker, there could be a possible way that if you're hoping that the this bill and to replace it with the updated version of what we intend to debate going forward. It's the first bill on the first bill. Very first time. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Freetown. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to introduce... Uh, honorable member, can you switch your... Oh. It's constituency. Oh, sorry. I have this one here. Sorry. Uh, so, honorable member, just for the record, we have the unanimous consent of the... No, no objection from the opposition. No objection from the independent member. Uh, honorable member, you thank, may... Thank see. you, members. Um, Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to introduce and have read for the first time a copy of the Civil Aviation Bill 2021. Honorable Member, just before we proceed, just so the record can, can be complete, it is hereby ordered that the Bill number 13, a bill for an act to amend the Civil Aviation Act, uh, be withdrawn from the agenda. Uh, second. Can I have a copy? Copy. Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the following bill be read for first time. A bill for an act to amend the Civil Aviation Act. As many as are in favor will remain seated. Those who oppose would stand. Order that the bill be read for the first time. A bill for an act to amend the Civil Aviation Act. Wait a first reading of bills. The new one. Yes, I've Order that the, the no, bill be brought up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. Uh, honorable member for Freetown, can you, uh, on first reading of the bill, can you present the bill that you are having, you're requesting to be read for the first time? Yes. Speaker, I beg leave to introduce and have read for the first time the Civil Aviation Bill 2021. Second. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. One game, Mr. Speaker, third time lucky. <laughs> I beg leave to introduce and have read for the first time a bill for an act to repeal and replace the Civil Aviation Act 2016 to modernize the regulation of civil aviation in the Bahamas in accordance with the Chicago Convention and for connected purposes. Second. Thank you. Oh, order that the notice be brought up. Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the following bill be read for the first time. A bill for an act to repeal and replace the Civil Aviation Act 2016 to modernize the regulation of civil aviation in the Bahamas in accordance with the Chicago Convention and for connected purposes. As many members are in favor will remain seated, those who oppose will stand. Order that the bill be read for the first time. Act 2016 to modernize the regulation of civil aviation in the Bahamas in accordance with the Chicago Convention and for connected purposes. Further, first reading of bills. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Freetown. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to introduce and have read for the first time a bill for an act to provide for the continuation of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Bahamas as the Civil Aviation Authority Bahamas, its functions and composition and for matters connected thereto. Order that the notice be brought up. Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the following bill be read for the first time. A bill for an act to provide for the continuation of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Bahamas as the Civil Aviation Authority Bahamas, its functions and composition and for matters connected thereto. As many members are in favor, will remain seated, those who oppose will stand. Order that the bill be read for the first time. A bill for an act to provide for the continuation of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Bahamas as the Civil Aviation Authority Bahamas, its functions and composition and for matters connected thereto. Further, first reading. first reading of bills. Speaker, I beg leave to introduce and have read for the first time a bill to establish a separate Bahamas Air Navigation Services Authority with its functions and composition. Order that the notice be brought up. Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the following bill be read for the first time. A bill to establish a separate Bahamas Air Navigation Services Authority with its functions and composition. As many members are in favor, will remain seated. Those who oppose will stand. Order that the bill be read for the first time. A bill for an act to a bill for an act to establish a separate Bahamas Air Navigation Services Authority with its functions and the composition. Point of first reading of bill. No, no, no further. No further. No further. Chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. No further first reading. There are no further first readings, Mr. Speaker. Second reading and committal of bills. 
Committee of the Whole House. Third reading and passing of bills. Consideration of Senate amendments. Resolutions. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Kalani. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I rise to move to debate on the resolution. At the end, I will read the resolution into the record. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as Prime Minister, the greatest values I hold there are the protection of human life, the promotion of human dignity, and the common good. I hold these values deep in my heart, Mr. Speaker, and in my soul. As a person of faith, I believe that every human being no matter the circumstance of birth or life circumstance, is wonderfully made in the image and likeness of Almighty God. Every human being possesses the same dignity and should enjoy the same protections of their country. The most fundamental right of every human being is the right to life. Such a life, Mr. Speaker, such a right is a gift from God. This right is enshrined in our Constitution in the protection of the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual. In our democracy, the right to life must be protected and preserved through actions and policies of the government of the day. During the COVID-19 pandemic, my government used every measure possible, including health care and emergency measures as provided for by our Constitution to preserve, to protect, and to defend human life. Mr. Speaker, when I became a medical doctor, I took a solemn oath known as the Hippocratic Oath. This is an oath taken by all medical doctors. Our version, one version of this oath states, I quote, I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings. I will prevent disease whenever I can for prevention is preferable to cure. Through the emergency orders, Mr. Speaker, we have sought to prevent death, illness, and suffering. And without these orders, there would have been many more deaths. With these orders, we have protected the Bahamian people. What we have done has been morally right and constitutionally right. In the Bahamas, the proclamation of emergency and Parliament's authorization of emergency powers grant government of the day the legal authority to act to protect the Bahamian people. The speaker, as we approach nearly a year of this deadly pandemic in our Bahamas, I recall the spirit and legacy of Dr. B.J. Nordage, who passed away in 2016. And I must remind this House, Mr. Speaker, that as a then young doctor in training at the Princess Mary Hospital, Dr. B.J. Nordage was my mentor and teacher. I asked myself, what would B.J. have done as a doctor, as a member of parliament, and as a cabinet minister, if faced with the worst pandemic in 100 years? It is my sincere belief that as a medical doctor, 
And as a man of conscience and compassion, BJ would have used every tool possible to save lives and prevent illness, including measures in the emergency proclamation. At BJ's official funeral in 2016, Mr. Speaker, I said of my colleague and friend, I quote, his life was as simple and uncomplicated as his initials. No big fanfare. He became a medical doctor, not just to care for the sick, but to help the young and strong to remain healthy and to enjoy long, fulfilling lives. He aided the miracle of birth and presided over the delivery into this world of hundreds, if not thousands of babies. I also told the story of a delivery where the baby was tragically stillborn. The attending nurses heard the understandable crying from the delivery room of a man who was in pain. And when the nurse went in to comfort the family and the weeping father, she discovered that it was BJ who was in tears alongside the grief-stricken couple. Mr. Speaker, such was the passion of BJ for his profession and for his patients. He was a man of deep compassion. He was a patriot who loved our people. In addition to being an obstetrician and gynecologist like myself, he had another calling, which inspired me and many others. Both of us had the privilege of serving as Minister of Health. BJ was drawn to politics and public service because he saw it as a means to deliver for more Bahamians on a grander scale. He knew when to put partisanship aside for the national and the greater good. I believe that this pandemic would have been one of those moments in history. I believe, Mr. Speaker, he would have worked across the aisle in a spirit of love and unity to protect the lives of our people from this deadly virus. Both BJ and I, Mr. Speaker, understand the struggle and the difficult decisions involved in saving and protecting the lives of mothers. We knew, we know what it is like to help to bring new life into the world. And we knew the pain of death of a patient. Mr. Speaker, my government and I use data and the advice of the medical experts to inform our decision making. In this pandemic, we do not make decisions for political gain. We do not engage in irresponsible, magical thinking. It is important for us, Mr. Speaker, to base our analysis of the crisis in facts and reality. And currently, for large parts of the world, right now is the worst of the pandemic. Countries are struggling with record cases hospitalizations and death. Scientists predicted that the winter in the Northern Hemisphere would be difficult. And sadly, their predictions were correct. Some of our Caribbean neighbors and friends are seeing record numbers. Europe and America have been hit hard there is resurgence of the virus in Asia. South Africa is having difficulties too. 
in Zimbabwe, four cabinet ministers have now died from COVID-19. In some jurisdictions, amidst record surges, ambulances were told only to bring to hospital COVID-19 patients who had a reasonable chance of survival. Hospitals have had to convert nearly every bit of space into COVID-19 wards, including garages. And that has only partially helped. While it is easy to set up more beds, there are a limited number of medical professionals to care for the sick. And some medical systems have outright collapsed. Patients' families, Mr. Speaker, have had to find oxygen tanks for their loved ones because supplies ran out because of the overwhelming number of people in need. And some of these scenes are playing out in rich and powerful countries, some in the developing world. Surges, Mr. Speaker, are particularly dangerous for small island developing states such as ours because of limited hospital space and medical staff. And this deadly and highly infectious virus is testing every country on the planet. It is truly a global health emergency. With record cases, hospitalizations and deaths in so many countries, global travel is again being curtailed. The slow importation of the virus around the world, there are new travel restrictions coming into force or the outright closure of borders. Whereas existing versions of the virus are already quite infectious, mutations are making matters even worse. Mr. Speaker, several dangerous variants have been discovered. Scientists have said some are significantly more infectious than other versions of the virus. There are also concerns that they may be even more deadlier. And further analysis, Mr. Speaker, is needed to confirm whether or not this is the case. With the global COVID-19 emergency being at its worst, countries are reimposing aggressive restrictions to stop the spread of the virus and, most importantly, save lives. For example, much of Western Europe is under some form of heavy restrictions or outright lockdown that has or will last for a month or even longer. These powerful rich and scientifically advanced countries are having a difficult time fighting the virus and its variants in winter when people are indoors. Mr. Speaker, during my training as a physician, we were taught to act to save lives, to lessen suffering, and to care for the sick. When the pandemic began, those lessons were paramount in my mind. My government and I would not just say things to be popular. We would not just do the popular thing to make everybody and everyone happy in the moment. 
We wanted to advance policies and rules to keep Bahamians healthy and most importantly, alive. If at times some of these rules were unpopular, as a doctor and prime minister, I was prepared to deliver the bitter medicine to keep our people well. Our founders, Mr. Speaker, knew times such as these would emerge. Times of true crisis and emergency that would test our resolve as a people. The emergency measures we enacted, which we seek to extend, are legal powers designed for moments such as these. Speaker, the COVID-19 pandemic is the worst crisis in our modern history. It has killed our family, friends, and neighbors, all of whom we continue to mourn. Speaker, I gave an example of just one of my brothers the other day. I want to give this house another example. Just a few months ago, another of my brother had passed away in Florida. I was unable to attend the funeral because of COVID-19. They had set up a Zoom funeral, Mr. Speaker, and because of my involvement in the COVID pandemic here in the Bahamas, I knew I could not attend the Zoom meeting on time. And they made provisions at the end of the funeral for me to bring my remarks via Zoom at the end. I spoke to his wife and children extended my regrets of not being present or not being able to attend, but reassured them that at the end of this pandemic, I will be able to travel and express my true feelings. Mr. Speaker, COVID-19 has caused exceptional harm to our economy. You can see, Mr. Speaker, what it is doing around the world. The official death toll is more than 2 million, with around 100 million confirmed cases. In the United States of America, more than 100 more than 400,000 individuals have died, and it's projected that by the end of this month, that would be in excess of half a million. Mr. Speaker, we have a population of 400,000, and if we were to follow that course or pattern, every Bahamian within the Bahamas would have been dead. However, it is thought that these numbers underestimate the lives lost and people infected. Bahamians know, Mr. Speaker, this is an emergency. Bahamians know that in extraordinary times, extraordinary measures must be taken to save lives. The measures we seek to extend are not per se a particular measure or set of measures, they give the government the ability to act, to preserve public health. We have used these measures to ensure masks are worn. We have used these measures, Mr. Speaker, to prevent mass gatherings, which serve as super spreader events. And these measures, Mr. Speaker, help us to stop the first wave 
at the beginning of the pandemic. These measures helped us to stop the second wave, which was even more severe. And we need these measures, Mr. Speaker, to continue to keep Bahamians safe. Mr. Speaker, let me be very clear with this point. The pandemic is not over. Though there's light on the horizon, because vaccines are slowly starting to reach more countries, we still have a long way to go before we get back to normal. The Bahamas has had many months of low COVID-19 numbers. Our health guidelines are working. The emergency measures, Mr. Speaker, are working. And the Bohemian people are complying with the rules. I commend the Bohemian people for their discipline. We must remain disciplined to keep the numbers low. We must also be realistic. With new strains circulating, it is quite possible for us to have additional waves before our population is vaccinated. We cannot, Mr. Speaker, under any circumstances, let our guard down. I repeat, so that Bahamian people may hear and understand. It may be painful, but we cannot let our guards down. The more we abide by the measures, the more we prevent a greater resurgence of the virus. We cannot become complacent and think the pandemic is over just because we have had a few good months. Mr. Speaker, when we last extended these measures, I was shocked and disappointed by the opposition. In the middle of the worst emergency in our modern history, the opposition opposed the legal emergency measures we use to save lives. Their opposition to life-saving measures was one of the lowest points in that party's history. Let us think for a moment, Mr. Speaker, what their opposition the emergent, to the emergency order would have meant. If there were no emergency orders, we could not mandate the wearing of masks and other life-saving measures. This could have led to many more infections and illnesses. This could have led to many more deaths. This could have led... Listen, could you recognize this honorable member for Cat Island, Rumpkin, San Salvador, on a point of order? I'm trying to understand, I could respond properly. Is the, is the Prime Minister indicating that he would not have been able to mandate life-saving measures such as wearing a mask, washing your hands, right, social distancing, without the proclamation of emergency? Is that what he's saying? Is that what he's saying? I just want to clear that up. No. That is, it, that is not true. It's not correct. His own, his own Attorney General has suggested how it's done. Now speak to it. The, 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 opposition, the opposition is a lawyer. He knows exactly what I meant. Okay. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Honorable, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Member, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Member, Mr. Speaker, you will have your Honorable Member for Cat Island, Rumpkin, Salvador. Um, 
Hmm? You rise on the point of order. Yes. State the point of order. The point of brief. order is that the Prime Minister is misleading this country no. to suggest, right, that the opposition, that this opposition, yeah. right, is, um, is, is opposing life-saving measures that could have only been enacted through his state of emergency proclamation being extended. We say that is not true. His his own attorney general does not agree with that. That's not what he said. Right. Uh, right. Mr. Speaker, and, and, and Mr. That's, Mr. that's what I'm saying. That's if, you, if, you Mr. Speaker, up, if you were trying to speak, I recognize this honorable member for Kalani. That's not what he said. Mr. That's Speaker, on, man. You got the time. orders, the orders allowed. Bring it when you come. The orders allowed. Many. The pandemic. Many emergency matters matters to be enacted. And the orders allowed for the government to act quickly. The opposition knows. Honorable members. The opposition knows that the orders do not confine. Uh, uh, honorable members. Honorable members. The member for Kalani has the floor. Honorable member for North Avoco. Mr. Speaker. And Kiara Island. The, the member for Kalani has the floor. If, if there were, who would say that? Look at what Joe Biden is doing. Honorable member. Honorable member for Yamakura. Not, not saying since the first second world war. This is the nonsense you're talking. Oh, come on, man. You should know better. Stop that clock. <laughs> Honorable member for Galani, you may continue. You got half an hour, you know. If there were no emergency measures, Mr. Speaker, oh. then everyone could have had mass gatherings such as parties and huge weddings, crowded clubs could have been packed and people face to face all night. Mr. Speaker, I hope the opposition, when he speaks, he would talk about how he wanted clubs and liquor and bars to be open and individuals to enjoy themselves while we were suffering from a pandemic. I hope he would expound. <laughs> if a surge emerged, the chair recognizes. Hey, the honor. uh, honorable member, you, yes, I am trying to recognize you. Thank you. Sir. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Cal Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador. Thank you. Sir. On a point of order. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is incorrect <laughs> that I suggested that bars be open, but so bars could be opened <laughs> for say. What I said. Is level the playing field and, no stop and stop and stop favoring his special interest donors. He allowed he allowed a bar to what open, bar? but you you explained that the bar was part of the hotel and it was not. It's part of the hotel. It, it is not. <laughs> It is not. There is every behemoth, every behemoth all thing that is such a thing as Hotel Enlargement Act. And you are well aware of it. And you know that it was a part of it. The bar, the you have the data that he you can look at it. Oh, so don't try to miss the island house. Lead this out. Island house. You want it. You the want it. The bar is open. The so island that house. Individuals can go in, break, dance, and dine. You want the healings to die. You said it yourself. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. What, what I wanted was a level playing field. That's what I wanted. I didn't want the, 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 the company authority to, be, to favor his donors, his special donors, who do not, who do not, who has a liquor license. Honorable member. Honorable member. Honorable member. Honorable member. Honorable member for Cal Island, Rumpkin, Salvador. That's what I said. You have your opportunity. opportunity. I continue to make it. You are favoring Honorable member for Cal Island, Rumpkin, and Salvador. Just outside of Life of Key, Island House has the... Honourable member. Honourable member. We we want to have a orderly debate, and I want honourable members on both sides to respect the chair. Each member will have the opportunity to debate. When you rise on a point of order, it's not an opportunity for you to carry on a, a, a discourse and, and debate at that time. There's no but, honorable member, thank you. If I use the break, I'm there for you.
And you should, the leader of opposition should not get near tall but over the hill for which they have ignored for so long and change are now coming. Shame, shame, shame. And, and stop shame. If a... I, I spoke, I spoke of the Hippocratic Oath. We do not discriminate. That is my training. And that is why, that is why, growing up, growing up in areas like over the hill, we will ensure that over the hill is elevated to where it should be. That is why we made it a free tax zone. over the hill tax free zone. Mr. Speaker, if we Angleston surge... Angleston is happy. Angleston, you know we love you. I can bring that bill for you. Just for you, not for him. <laughs> Angleston will be included. Long Island brought water for him. Yeah. I'll bring tax free for you. Why bring Why bring Mr. Speaker, if a surge emerged, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we need, we need to record If a surge emerged on an island under the opposition policy, we would have no authority to act quickly to prevent the spread. And a government under the direction of leader of the opposition would sit and watch disaster. <laughs> you want to interview? You want to, you want to speak? What's that? By opposing the emergency measures, Mr. Speaker, the opposition was advancing a policy of chaos, a policy of sickness, and a policy of death. It is sad to see the position that party, that party has taken in such a crisis. We are acting, Mr. Speaker, and making the tough decisions to save lives. Yet, they oppose us at every turn, just trying to be popular. Their reckless and irresponsible positions are dangerous to our country. Governments are elected, Mr. Speaker, to be defenders of the people's interests, not ponderous to the whims of the day. The policies by government advanced these 10 plus months have worked to beat back waves of the virus and save Bahamians. As a result, our country is currently one of the countries doing better from a health perspective. And the opposition, Mr. Speaker, would not even acknowledge this success. Their tactics, tactics is to politicize everything and to oppose for opposing sake as a government. We take advice from the best Bahamian efforts led by Dr. Dal Regis and the medical team at the Ministry of Health. We have a good team all Bahamians should be proud of, Mrs. Mr. Speaker. We also, we also consult widely with the private sector, civic organizations, and religious leaders. Yet, at the beginning of the crisis, the opposition set up its own COVID-19 group under their party political branding. That, Mr. Speaker, was a disgraceful act that demonstrated political gain is what they are about more than anything else. The Bahamian people, Mr. Speaker, are fortunate that it is this side and not them that is in power during these difficult times. Mr. Speaker, as we have throughout the pandemic, my government will continue to use this authority responsibly. Currently, in many of our islands, there are few to no restrictions. Bahamians are mostly able to go about their lives with few restrictions because our numbers are currently low. 
We only use restrictions to slow the virus when there is a problem. We strike a balance between the need to keep Bohemians safe and the need for people to make a living. The tightening and loosening policy has worked. It will take various behaviors and innovations to end the COVID-19 pandemic. Vaccinations, new medications, new rapid tests, and continued masking will all play roles in concluding this difficult period. And until then, Mr. Speaker, we must remain committed to the public health guidelines that has protected us thus far. As I stand here, Mr. Speaker, I am so proud of the Bahamian people. When I go out, I see widespread compliance with the guidelines. Though, as I stated in the House on Monday, there are those who are not following the necessary measures. And I once again note that large gatherings like funerals and junkanoo rush outs have the potential to be super spreader events. There have been a number of large funerals reported in the press lately. I encourage the authorities to ensure that Bahamians and residents are complying with the emergency measures. Mr. Speaker, I must give thanks to God for bringing us this far, and I ask the nation to continue to pray that God would continue to deliver us. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to announce today that following a reassessment by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Bahamas will be moved down to level three travel health notice. From the more serious level four. And this reassessment came after discussions between myself, other Bahamian officials, and the U.S. government. We will, I believe, be moved to level three because the CDC sees how much progress we have made and are convinced that we will continue to be vigilant. A part of this vigilance is the availability of quick emergency measures we can use because of the emergency orders. Mr. Speaker, to facilitate the distribution of vaccines, the National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee has been established to advise the Ministry of Health's National Immunization Technical Working Group, which tackles the technical components of the introduction of vaccines. The National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee will hold a press conference next week to provide more details of the distribution plan and an update on vaccines. So if you have in your debate about where's the plan, scratch that line out. The Consultative Committee, Mr. Speaker, is led by Dr. Merceland Dahl Regis, Special Health Advisor to the Prime Minister. The committee, Mr. Speaker, is made up of members from the public and private sectors, medical professionals, civil society, religious, and community leaders. And today, I wish to provide the House with a general update on COVID-19 vaccines. Given the global impact of the pandemic and the urgent need for COVID-19 vaccines, unprecedented financial resources and scientific collaborations have been poured 
into the safe and effective development of a vaccine using the same strict clinical and safety standards. The Bahamas government, Mr. Speaker, is working on all fronts to secure the COVID-19 vaccine through the COVAX facility and with the assistance of World Health Organization and PAHO, the Bahamas has presumptively secured enough doses to vaccinate 20% of our population once available. And I'm certain that the Minister of Health would speak to that. The Bahamas, Mr. Speaker, is also looking to accessing vaccines through the African Medical Supplies Platform via CARICOM. And the government has also made direct contact with providers of approved vaccines. I wish to assure Bahamians that the vaccines approved for use in the Bahamas have met the strict and rigorous standards of the World Health Organization. The vaccine, Mr. Speaker, will not be mandatory. And so far, approved vaccines will only be administered to adults. The vaccine will be free of charge to all eligible adults who choose to take it. Which vaccines will be used and exactly when they will arrive in country is still being worked out. To ensure all Bohemians and residents who choose to take the vaccine can be vaccinated safely and quickly, extensive plans are underway to ensure a safe and effective rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine throughout the Bahamas. The national rollout of the COVID-19 will be one of the greatest logical challenge, logistical challenges that the country has ever undertaken. The national distribution plan covers distribution at the national district and family islands, training and capacity building, implementation of an electronic immunization registry, administration of the COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine logistics and storage management, communications and social mobilization, and monitoring and supervision. Mr. Speaker, I wish to remind the House that last week we advised that effective Sunday past 24 January 2021, pharmacies, gas stations, and laundromats may now operate between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. on New Providence and outdoor. Outdoor dining and restaurants is also permitted on Sundays between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. on New Providence and Abaco. Speaker, in November 2020, the Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Risk Management Order 2020 by Clause 9 provided that all persons employed within the public service, unless specifically designated as essential workers, shall work remotely from home. Further, all persons employed within the public service who are so designated as essential workers by the Permanent Secretary of the respective Ministry shall report to their place of work. Since March 2020, agencies of government were permitted to make, make adjustments to their staff complement in the workplace. This decision was taken in the interest of the safety and well-being of individuals in the workplace due to the pandemic and the uncertainties related thereto while continuing to deliver service. Many public offices, Mr. Speaker, have continued to function from their places of work in reduced numbers and on shift systems. Others are working remotely from home and are fully engaged. We will now review the situation and current arrangements for the conduct 
of work by public officers and for their orderly and safe return to the workplace. Such a review, Mr. Speaker, will incorporate the required COVID-19 health protocols and advise the relevant health authorities. Specific consideration will be given to the nature of the work environment and physical workplaces, the specific, specific concerns of employees related to any personal extenuating health issues, and in consultation with the respective trade unions. The, re the return of employees to their places of work will commence as early as 1st of February 2021. Permanent secretaries and heads of department will communicate with employees regarding the operational protocols specific to their circumstances. I wish to emphasize, Mr. Speaker, that the safety and well-being of all employees in public service, their families, and all citizens and residents remain my and our highest priority. Mr. Speaker, in noting that the Bahamas could experience a very difficult third wave in the pandemic, a member of this honorable house said in an interview with one of the daily newspapers a few weeks ago, I quote, I think that every country needs to be constantly reassessing its approach, if not on a weekly basis, certainly as often as is possible, end quote. I agree with this, Mr. Speaker, which is why we are remaining vigilant and on alert. The member also stated, and I quote, so we have to remain vigilant because certainly for the next six to 12 months, COVID is going to be very much a part of the reality of every single country on the face of this planet, end quote. Because COVID-19 will be with us for some time, the government of the Bahamas, like governments all over the world, has at its disposal emergency measures which can quickly be used. Mr. Speaker, the availability of these emergency orders is like having life-saving measures such as medicine, equipment, and personnel at a hospital. A hospital has an intensive care unit, accident and emergency, oxygen supplies, painkillers, analgesics, antibiotics, and other medicine and emergency supplies, waiting and ready for whatever emergency arises and at whatever time of the day or night. With all of these, while all of these measures may not be used by an individual, they are there. They are kept, Mr. Speaker, in case of an emergency. That is why doctors are on standby to perform surgery or other life-saving measures and operations. Emergency orders, Mr. Speaker, are similar. While many of them may not be used, they are there in case of an emergency. The measures are, are there in case our COVID-19, our COVID numbers go up quickly. People don't prepare for a hurricane after it comes or is right at your doorsteps. The reason we prepare for hurricanes, including getting together food and medical supplies, sandbags, candles and batteries, and boarding up homes and buildings is in the case a hurricane hits. If the hurricane does not hit, at least, thank God, we were spared. But if it hits, and people have taken precautions and emergency measures, 
life can be saved and many people can avoid injuries. These emergency measures, Mr. Speaker, are one way of being prepared, hoping for the best and preparing for the worst. Because of these measures and the discipline and courage of Bahamian people, the Bahamas is doing better than most countries in the world. We have some of the least restrictions being used today and we are freer in this regard than much, if not most, of the world. In honor of those who have passed away and in honor of our healthcare and frontline workers, let us continue to be vigilant in protecting each other. We continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones and those who are in hospital or recovering from the virus. The world continues to admire and to mark the manner of our bearing as a free, proud, sovereign people as we continue to navigate wide and treacherous shores, shores. Mr. Speaker, there is with a good and clear conscience and with abiding admiration for the Bahamian people that I wholly and resolutely support the continuance of the proclamation of emergency made on the 24th day of November 2020 until the 23rd day of May 2021. Voting against these measures would be like being against food assistance, the unemployment assistance, and the economic assistance put in place by my government. All of these measures, including the emergency measures, were absolutely necessary as part of a comprehensive response to one of the gravest emergencies in our history. Mr. Speaker, I want to inform the Amen people in this parliament that we have extended the unemployment benefit to the end of January of this year, and we had ensured that individuals who had not made contribution, they too had benefited. Because after all, Mr. Speaker, they are the humans. And the unemployment benefits will be extended furthermore to the end of February. Depending on the circumstances, if necessary, we would review the situation and possibly extend it again, as we've done with our food assistance program. Mr. Speaker, may God bless this House and its members, including, I take that back, let us continue to pray to Almighty God for courage for wisdom. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. And I doubt you can read my mind. You wouldn't want to get in my head. When you see it go in my head, you'd say, oh my God, let me get out here. <laughs> let us continue to pray to Almighty God, Mrs. Speaker, for courage, for wisdom, and for resilience. Let us pray for, for grace, and let us pray for guidance. Let us always give thanks to the God who gives life and grants us mercy. May God continue to bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Speaker, Speaker, I thank you, and I so move. Whereas, pursuant to Article 29.1 of the Constitution, the Governor General may make a proclamation of emergency declaring that a state of public emergency for the purpose of that article exist in the Bahamas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House approves the continuance of the proclamation of emergency made on the 24th day of November 2020 until the 23rd day of May 2021. Affirms the continuance 
in effect of the emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic risk management regulations 2020 made on the 24th day of November 2020 until the 23rd day of May 2021. Affirms the continuance in effect of emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic risk management order 2020 made on the 24th day of November 2020 until the 23rd, 23rd day of May 2021 and affirm the continuance in effect of emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic risk management special provisions order 2020 made on the 24th day of November 2020 until the 23rd day of May 2021. Mr. Speaker, I so move.